Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna take a look back at the Samsung Galaxy S6 and how it holds up in 2023. It's hard to believe, but the Samsung Galaxy S6 came out almost a decade ago, back in 2015. The Galaxy S6 was released alongside the Galaxy S6 Edge and Edge Plus, and came in at a price of $600 or $200 on a two-year contract. In comparison, a brand new Galaxy S23 comes in at a price of $800 today. Of course, the Galaxy S6 was available on all carriers at the time, so at the time that was AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint, and US Cellular, and of course you could tell what carrier everybody had based on the tramp stamp on the back. But of course, this one is a Verizon variant. Of course, they had to tell you it has 4G LTE, and if that's not enough, you of course had bloatware included. You can see the messages plus, as well as the Verizon folder full of junk from them. The Galaxy S6 came in four different colors. The one I have here is called Black Sapphire. And as you can see, it's more blue than black, but uh, still absolutely beautiful. The other colors it came in are white, gold, and a much brighter, lighter blue. For storage, the Galaxy S6 came with three different capacity options, 32 gigs, 64, or 128 gigs at the top end. And just for reference, the Galaxy S23 comes with 128 gigs at its lowest. And just to give you a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the outgoing model and the new model, so the S5 and the S6, you can see that the S6 was a stark change from the S5, for the better, I think, personally. Now, of course, on the front, you can see that the S5 is a bit uh, fatter around every corner, bigger bezels, uh, but overall still has that same home button, back button, menu button uh, at the bottom. Saw the Samsung logo and the earpiece and camera, everything is in the same spot. But you can see that it's a unibody design on the S6, while the S5 is using this cheap silver plastic. It just does not look good. And of course, the one I have did not age very well at all. Now, of course, there was a bit of controversy going from the S5 to the S6 because there was one big thing removed. Can you guess what that was? Yes, the removable battery is no longer a thing on new phones. So this was that big change. Another big change from the S5 to the S6 was no added storage. So whatever storage you got with the S6 was what you got. You could not expand it with micro SD cards like you could in the S5. Of course, that changed later because Samsung took the criticism and actually made the change with future models. But the S6, when it came out, they tried to go with only onboard storage. And as you can see, it didn't work out very well for them. I definitely feel that the design of the Galaxy S6 still looks good to this day and of course was a huge upgrade over the Galaxy S5 that preceded it. You can see it's covered in glass on the front and back. I do have that black sapphire as I mentioned. Very thin design, very comfortable in the hand. Features that aluminum rail going all the way around the device. You can see on the front we have a silver earpiece. You have your uh, sensors at the left, camera to the right. Home button at the bottom, we have two capacitive buttons for multitasking and back that light up once you touch them. Do you have haptic feedback as well? On the bottom, we do have those bands for Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, micro USB, microphone, speaker on that side, power key, SIM tray, and on the top, two more bands. We have a IR blaster, which you don't frequently see anymore, as well as another mic. And we have, of course, our volume keys on the opposite side as well. But overall, still a beautiful design, even today. Now, while, of course, we have huge bezels and a pretty small display by today's standards, the display on the S6 is absolutely beautiful still to this day. It's a 5.1-inch AMOLED Quad HD display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with a peak brightness of only 600 nits, which is crazy to think this is still plenty bright, but you have flagships now with literally double that. So you can see them excellent in uh, bright sunlight. But you can see that the screen has great colors, vibrancy, everything is super sharp, looks absolutely beautiful. And here's a quick video sample just to show you how vibrant and beautiful this screen still looks. You can see colors are vibrant, viewing angles are still absolutely excellent. But of course, Samsung knows how to make great displays. Now you may be wondering, how well does the Galaxy S6 perform nowadays? Well, it came with an Exynos 7420 chipset and three gigs of RAM. If you got the Edge Plus model, that came with four gigs. And even by today's standards, that's not great. So going through you know, the different home screens or going into the apps, you can see that 
everything scrolls pretty well. If you go into first party apps, those are going to work uh, decently well. Like of course our camera, doesn't take too long to get into that. If we go into our email app, that works pretty quickly. All these first party apps, Google apps themselves actually work okay as well. It's when you start getting into modern applications that are not really meant for this phone where things start getting a little sluggish. So for example, with TikTok, just to get to the sign-in screen, it just takes so long. And in addition, going into the Play Store to download these, the phone got super, super hot. So it was working really hard. So you can see how long it takes for these modern apps to get on there. So honestly, if you're thinking of using this nowadays, I, I wouldn't. It's on a very outdated version of Android, but modern apps still seem to work on this. But you can see how sluggish and slow this is. It would be an absolute painful experience. So I would personally not recommend it, but it is nice to look back on. And if you're trying to use it for some basic tasks, it might be okay. The cameras in the Galaxy S6 were absolutely fantastic for 2015, but by today's standards, they're not the greatest. We only have two. You have the front-facing 5 megapixel camera and a single 16 megapixel camera on the rear here. You can see not much of a bump on the back for that camera. Now, this is a Sony sensor. It does allow you to take uh, pretty good pictures, and you can take 4K video up to 30 frames per second. However, you can only record five minutes at a time on that. You can also do slow-mo video as well uh, in 720p. Of course, zoom is not great, goes up to 8x, and it looks pretty choppy uh, when you do take a highly zoomed in picture. You have no ultra wide, no AI, no night mode, no real anything good on here, but uh, for the basics, it's pretty decent. And I'll show you a couple of shots and videos from it now, as well as a comparison between a Galaxy S23 Ultra, just to show you how far we've come. sample of video on the front-facing camera on the Galaxy S6. It's really bright outside, of course, but not bad. As for software on the Galaxy S6, it is long out of date, and as you can see, its final version here on this one is Android version 7.0 with the March 1st, 2018 security patch. Came with Android 5.0.2, if that tells you how long ago this came out, and while it still works and modern apps still work on it, it's definitely outdated and you can definitely see based on the UI with this phone. The battery on the Galaxy S6 is a paltry 2550 milliamp hours and of course non-removable unlike the Galaxy S5 and even just using this one for a little bit just to take pictures and show you on video it has been pretty poor so definitely not a battery powerhouse. By comparison uh, the Galaxy S23 which is the new variant of what this is that one comes with a 3,990 milliamp hour battery. So there you guys have it. A quick look at the Galaxy S6 in 2023. Is this something you should pick up to use nowadays? No. Is this something that you maybe should pick up if you're kind of nostalgic and you had one back in the day? Yeah, it probably would be a good idea if you wanted to go down memory lane and check out how it works nowadays. It's still an absolutely beautiful phone, great design, and actually still allows you to download and use modern apps, which is kind of surprising. Um, but there you guys have it. If you guys have any questions or comments on this one, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.